Another thing that you can create with your paint skins, had this idea, because <laughs> I've been having so much fun creating the tumblers, is that why not coat the tumbler with a paint skin and then apply a vinyl over it or anything you like really. So I have this, t this older paint skin that I created and uh, since Halloween's coming, I thought I would do a fun kind of Halloween themed tumbler <laughs> for this one. So I'm going to use this paint skin, do a bit of glow in the dark stuff, and then basically apply a vinyl. I'm just going to see, so this is the paint skin, it should totally, as you can see, fit. There's enough of it. I mean, you could also just paint the paints or paint your tumbler, but paint skins have the beautiful cells on them. Makes it look really cool. So, if you're thinking of doing using your paint skins for stuff, you could definitely put them onto a tumbler, which would be really cool. And I'm just trying to see which way I want my paint skin to go. <laughs> I want more of this grayish white part, so I think I'm going to cut it here, like straight, and that way that'll be the edge. So I'm just going to take my scissors. Now, you can use whatever color paint skin you would like to use. You don't have to use these colors, but I think that it would be beautiful for a tumbler is just to coat it with a paint skin like if you had a different colored one or a vibrantly colored one I'm just doing a Halloween themed one for today and I'm going to make sure because I cut that off that this is going to fit around oh yeah awesome so in order to glue this on I'm just going to use some Mod Podge. I said it right that time. <laughs> I didn't say Mod Podge, which I always say. I said Mod Podge. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is just basically take some of the Mod Podge. And I can also uh, put tape on the bottom, which might be a good idea first. So I don't get any of the Mod Podge on the bottom half of the tumbler bottom because I want to leave the bottom part of this tumbler black because this one is one of those 20 this is a 20 ounce Mars tumbler so I'm just using the line they already have on the tumbler as my guide for the electrical tape and I'm just pulling it so I can get a really good seal and you'll find when you create tumblers you're putting electrical tape on all the time but that's okay now this piece has to come down a little didn't line up perfect all right and I like to go over a little bit on the tape part so that none of the resin gets into that onto the area it doesn't always work, but usually. <laughs> you could, I guess, cover your entire tumbler, but it's hard to cover with a paint skin on the bottom portion. So I'm just gonna cover this top part because it's pretty straight. And I just have a paintbrush. And the nice part about Mod Podge is it dries clear, so you don't have to worry too, too much. If you go over a certain area but it does dry pretty quickly so what I'll probably do is do small sections at a time so that I get good coverage so let's line this up so I just have a little area here just trying to see what part I want to make sure that this edge is kind of straight. Oh, it's already on there. 
So you can see, I can even like pull on this paint skin and it'll actually stretch a little bit too so that you get really good contact. Now you're probably wondering about this bottom part. Well, you can cut it with scissors, like you could do a 90 degree angle, cut it with scissors, or I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife where that edge was. And basically, I'm just going to make sure that the X-Acto knife falls into that edge and just cut it, just like that. So I can actually do this the whole way around because it actually lines up pretty, oops, separate there, <laughs> pretty evenly with that edge, except for right here where I kind of missed the mark. There we go. And just be sure to keep adding glue where you don't have glue yet and pushing down on your paint skin. So it's super easy to apply and then I'm going to apply a coat of resin over top of this paint skin to make it really pop. So here make sure it's super flat, really connects well with the tumbler. So you don't want bubbles, like there's one right there, inside, underneath the paint skin. So that's why you just have to push down really good. Make sure that you get good contact, that everything glues down nicely. And you could do some pretty funky colored cells. Like if you have a really beautiful blue cellular one, that would be really pretty. Then you could put some ocean or beach text on top of your cell for your tumbler, which would be really cool. sure that that sticks. So with mine, because I'm using glow in the dark, wherever there's white, it's going to really glow. But at least it's not going to be just boring white behind the glow in the dark. It's going to actually be these beautiful cells, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Now for ending it, you could actually leave, like, this has a pretty cool line to it, which I could just fold over and glue down. It's kind of thick, but be kind of cool. Or I can basically line it up perfect and just cut a line with the original, <laughs> which I think I might do. Even though that is cool, it is kind of thick. If I had thinner edges, I would probably leave that hanging over and just kind of glue it straight down. I'm just going to find the Okay, I've mixed up my resin, so I'm ready to go to apply the coat. You could put your vinyl, if you have a Halloween thing, right on your paint skin, but because I want this to glow in the dark, I'm actually going to put a layer of the glow in the dark resin over top of the paint skin first. So I've mixed up some resin with some glow in the dark pigment. You'll see links in the description. I need a little bit of paper towel <laughs> so that I got something to put that on. And I'm using orange glow in the dark. I think it's going to be pretty cool. 
We'll see if it turns out. <laughs> Um, it doesn't look orange during the day, but when this stuff charges, it will glow orange. So that's kind of a cool hidden feature. And I might have to put a few coats of it because I'm doing, with tumblers you do such a thin coat of resin, that there's not a whole lot of pigment inside the layer. So I might actually end up doing a couple coats of this. We'll see. We'll see how much it glows. And I only mixed up less than an ounce. So this is because it's a two to one ratio. I did 14 grams of the resin and then just uh, seven of the hardeners. So not very much resin at all because you don't need very much to coat your tumblers and you want to get all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top as long as you don't get inside the tumbler you're good to go <laughs> Okay, I'm going to let that spin overnight and don't forget to come back in a half hour, 45 minutes to remove the tape. Very important. <laughs> but other than that, we'll come back when it's dry. Okay, so I had to do two layers of resin on this because I forgot to clean the paint skin before, so I had a bit of rejection on my resin. So important tip, always clean your paint skins before you apply resin. And I could have probably put two coats of Liquid-X Gloss first once I put this on the tumbler and then applied the resin which helps you identify if you're going to have any rejection. So just a helpful tip there. So I love how it turned out. I brought it and charged the glow in the dark and it definitely glows orange which is awesome. I have this really cool Halloween themed vinyl that I'm going to try and apply. <laughs> so basically um, this is nine and a quarter inches across, seven inches high and this tumbler has straight walls basically. Um, so I don't have to adjust the vinyl because the walls on here are straight up and down. But some tumblers are tapered, so you would have to adjust your vinyl. So just a note there. But because this one is straight and I measured, it should work out, <laughs> if anything. I think I might snip right here so that I put this piece on first and then I'll put the monster guy on and just kind of line them up. I think it'll be easier than me trying to put the whole thing over the tumbler. So I'm just going to snip, I'm actually just going to cut this half of him off because doing it in two pieces is probably going to be easier than doing it in one big piece. And this was a very small little connection, so I'm not too worried about it. And I have some transfer tape. So it's just reusable transfer tape. So I'm going to use that in order to put this on to my tumbler. And I made it so that the seams line up basically on the opposite side. So this seam would line up like this. And then I could put some text here if I wanted to. So I have where the seams line up on the back of the tumbler right here is what I want to cover up. So that is where I'm going to put the seam of the vinyl. And this could, <laughs> could get complicated just because there's so many bats. But let's see how it goes. I think I'm going to do it this way. So you just put your transfer tape on and you can use a little squeegee thing. I just use my nails, but you can use a little, some people have those little scraper things. I have some somewhere. 
As to where they are, I'm not too sure, but I'm just going to use my nail. Now my transfer tape is not quite as potent or sticky as like the Cricut transfer tape, the actual brand name of Cricut. So that's why sometimes it's a little bit harder to get like these off because the transfer tape isn't quite as sticky. All right, I'm going to keep going and then we're going to transfer it on. I'll show you how I do that. And then I gotta do another layer of resin. Okay, that is the spooky Halloween vinyl. <laughs> it is hard to get a large area of vinyl onto a tumbler, and getting all the bubbles out can sometimes be super tricky. You just kind of have to keep working it. I have found that, let's say I have one stuck right there in the middle, super difficult. I usually just grab a pin. Let's see if I can grab one. So I usually, here's what I do as a little trick. So there's a bubble in the middle of his forehead. I usually just grab a thumbtack or you can grab like a needle or something like that. And I'll just give it a tiny little like poke just to get the air out. And then you just kind of work it all towards that little tiny hole in the middle. And you won't even notice after you've worked it a little bit that you get all the air out of your vinyl right there. So if you have large holes in it, like this, the ones near the edge, you can usually just work them to the edges. But sometimes every now and then you're going to get a really big hole in the middle of your large piece of vinyl that you just can't get out. And so, I mean, you can take a little X-Acto knife or a threading needle would probably be better because it probably would leave a smaller hole. And I just, I just poke it. And I kind of work that air bubble out towards that hole. Just like that. And then you don't even see it. So that's one trick that I use to get the bubbles out that are super impossible. And then you get a nice clean flat vinyl. Now obviously when it's broken up with a bunch of bats, <laughs> a little bit easier. So yeah. Thinking that's looking pretty awesome. Right here, you're going to see I didn't quite connect to the other piece. So I'm just going to try and push it down a bit so it kind of lines up. I'm just going to take a paint pen. So if you want, you could just take a Sharpie or a black paint pen. Uh, Sharpie works too. And I'm just going to connect it, basically. Because uh, once you put the, the coat of resin over top, honestly, 
it's so minute of a little connection that it should be totally good. And like right here along the edge, there's like a sliver of the paint skin left. That's going to glow. So I definitely want to make sure that I just kind of maybe do run a little bit along the bottom. And this is all going to get covered with resin, so it's not going to disappear. You won't have to worry about it like the ink bleeding or anything like that. There. So you can see that now it's totally connected. <laughs> so you could do little touch-ups like that before you put your last layer of resin over top. But I'm liking this one. This is the Halloween. And I'll definitely be taking some pics of him glowing. So this is actually, even though it looks like a grayish clear with the cells from the paint skin, this is actually a uh, orange glow in the dark for Halloween. So I'll take some pictures of it glowing in the dark after I put the final coat of resin on and some during the day. You see the spooky transformation. <laughs>